Today I tell you a story that takes us to the heart of 19th century India, the story of Princess Rani of Shansi, the woman who, fighting with her son tied to her back, embodied courage, resilience and dedication, leading an epic battle against British oppression that sought to take over her kingdom and kill her people. Even today, her story remains an icon of untamed female pride and struggle for justice and freedom. Hello guys and welcome. If you would like to hear more historical gossip, then just click on that subscribe button. Now, let's start today's video. Viewer discretion is advised. This is an educational documentary. Princess Rani, also known as Rani of Shanti, was an iconic figure of Indian independence and one of the most celebrated heroines in the country's history. Born on November 19, 1828, in Varanasi, India, she married the King of Jhansi, Raja, becoming queen in 1842. Rani and Raja lived a happy marriage, loving and respecting each other. They were generous and just rulers, loved throughout the kingdom. Although they did not have children of their own, Raja had a very young son from a previous marriage, Damodar, whose mother had passed away. It should also be noted that in many traditional societies in India, including that of Shansi at the time, it was common for rulers and aristocrats to have more than one wife or companion, or to have children from previous unions. Queen Rani took Raja's son under her protection and loved him as if he was her own. After her husband's death in 1853, Rani became a central figure in the Indian Rebellion of 1857 against British rule. During those years, indeed, the British rule was seeking to appropriate Indian territories illicitly, introducing the Doctrine of Lapse, which was a policy through which Indian principalities would be ceded to England as colonies if indigenous rulers had no direct heir. This meant that when an Indian ruler died without a legitimate heir, the British government would refuse to recognise a successor and would seize the kingdom, claiming there was no legitimate hereditary right. This allowed the British to gradually incorporate more and more Indian territories under their control. The British desired the kingdom of Chansey and other Indian states for several reasons related to their policy of expansion and consolidation of colonial rule in India during the period known as the British Raj. Additionally, there was also a strategic interest in Indian territories as they provided natural resources, cheap labour and markets for British products. In the case of the Shanzi territory, when Rani's husband the king died without her having borne him a male heir, the British attempted to apply the doctrine of lapse to annul Rani and her illegitimate son's successor rights over her empire. This prompted Rani to refuse acceptance of annexation and led to her armed resistance against British authority. The queen fought with determination to protect the rights of her adopted son and the people of Shanzi. In Indian history, Rani was not only a courageous ruler, but also distinguished herself as a military commander and formidable warrior. She led and trained an entire army, and for a whole year, she fought fiercely every day for what she considered her kingdom, to prevent a prince from seeing his kingdom overthrown, a people from being left homeless, and to fight against the injustices of power it was she, a woman, who initiated a war known as the Indian Rebellion of 1857, or the First War of Indian Independence. Legend has it that during the Battle for Shanti, Rani was seen on horseback fighting against British troops with a child tied to her back. The image of Rani riding with a child on her back has become a symbol of her determination, courage, and dedication to the cause of Indian independence. This heroic gesture has often been cited as an example of her incredible moral and physical strength. Although it is not certain whether the child depicted tied to Rani's back during the battle was actually young Damodar, it is believed to be a symbol attributed to the mythology surrounding her heroic figure. In many narratives and artistic representations, the child symbolically represents her commitment to protect the future and well-being of the people of Shanzi and India, as well as her role as a woman, warrior, mother and leader. Despite her valiant resistance, 
Shanti eventually fell into the hands of the British in 1858, Rani died alongside the fall of her city while she fought to defend her kingdom. Her legacy remains immensely respected in India, where she is commemorated as an icon of the struggle for independence and determination against oppression. Princess Rani is celebrated to this day as a symbol of courage, independence and sacrifice throughout India. In my opinion, Rani should be a symbol of female pride, not only in India, but also a fundamental lesson in always defending what we believe in. Her story teaches us courage, resilience, and serves as a reminder to always fight, even in the face of challenges and adversity, for freedom, justice, and even more importantly, for what we love. And you guys, were you already familiar with the story of Princess Rani of Shanxi? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you liked this topic because this is the first in a series of videos about badass women of history. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss the next episode. Thank you for watching.